I think we're good. I think we're live. Um, if you can hear us and see us, give us a little chat message saying that 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 you're here and let us know where you're at. We've I personally have gotten a lot of a lot of a kick out of seeing folks be like, I'm you know, I'm in the UK or I'm in Idaho or Canada or whatever. So um, but uh, yeah, I think everybody's good to go. Are you all seeing that we're yeah, Jola. Hi, Jola. Um, nice. Ale Real 3D. Ethan, man, Ethan, it's just like so consistent. Thanks, bud. Thanks for showing up. And the Beaver. Nice. Duluth. Not, I've not been to Minnesota, but I am a fan of the hot dish. Um, where I come from, it's called a casserole. Uh, Idaho. That's awesome. Uh, Missouri. Yeah, Missouri, that's, yeah, from Oklahoma, so pretty close. Um, hey, Ekram. So thanks again for showing up. Uh, you know, today is the last day of the week-long furniture design and manufacturing kind of summit that we're doing. I really hope that you found it to be useful. I personally, I was commenting to Jonathan before the live stream, I, uh, it, this is like my first time being on a YouTube live and it's been a really cool experience to get to connect with everybody. Austin used to live in Austin. Um, and, uh, yeah. So anyway, I, I really appreciate you showing up. I want to welcome back the two all-stars who helped me kick off the series, Jonathan Odom and Brad Tallis. For those of you who are just joining for the first time this week, I'm Trent Still. I'm a technical marketing manager for Fusion 360. My job is essentially to, to speak relevantly and credibly to our customers about what Fusion's good for with a, with a little bit of a no BS attitude. Uh, that's one that I personally take just because that's the way I operate. But uh, my background is in architecture, advanced manufacturing and, and product design. Uh, I have a, a, a furniture manufacturing business in San Francisco that we work on uh, essentially consumer driven manufacturing. And um, it's, uh, it's been a total treat to share some of our tips and tricks with you this week. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Jonathan, why don't you give us a little quick intro of yourself and Brad, you can follow Jonathan up. Yeah, I'm Jonathan Odom. I'm a Fusion 360 community manager, been at Autodesk since 2014. Um, my background includes uh, film special effects, animatronics. Um, I got my degree in architecture. I did that for about five years. I've done exhibit design, product design, furniture, um, that, and a lot of other things. Yeah, my name is Brad Tallis. I've been doing um, computer-aided design probably 20 plus, 25 years now. Um, started on the hand drafting board. Um, I actually started in the civil engineering because I wanted to be, go into architecture and they said, you should start with civil and all my buddies were in mechanical engineering. I'm like, that looks way more cool than drawing pipes and channels and stuff like that. So I kind of jumped ship and, and moved more toward the mechanical side of things. So I actually have a degree, it's called drafting technology, it covers everything from electrical to mechanical to architectural, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I uh, started with Hewlett Packard. We worked on the inkjet printer designs um, using direct modeling techniques and uh, and then probably about what, 15 years ago, moved with over to PTC, was in federal aerospace and defense for them. Um, got to visit lots of customers, got to see the challenges and the successes that they had with CAD tools and stuff like that. And then six years ago, this week actually is my six year anniversary um, at Autodesk, I joined the Fusion 360 team and uh, lots of cool people here at Autodesk. We love geeking out doing stuff like this. So we really appreciate all of you attending these live streams. Yeah, couldn't have said it better myself, friend. That's great. Um, so just a little bit of recap. The week has seen essentially taking, you know, some of the most basic ways to use Fusion, but still be super powerful. So Jonathan did an awesome demo about kind of joints, assemblies, and kind of the process of iterating through uh, some jigs and fixtures. And as we all know, you can't make anything without good jigs and fixtures. I, you know, I have an entire wall of different jigs and fixtures uh, just to make some of my, th even just to prep stock, to make stock to where I can manufacture it. Some of them require jigs and fixtures. So it was really cool to see Jonathan walk through that process. And, you know, of course, Jonathan being Jonathan, and you know the the total uh, fabricator that he is, he of course made the thing in real life, and then did you a little live demo 
uh, which I thought was awesome. Day two, we really jumped into parameters for production. I don't know about y'all, but I get a lot of customers who say, I love this, but I need it X length or X depth or something like that. It's a total, you know, it happens all the time. And we really talked about how to build a brand based on parameters or a product line based on parameters to optimize your output and to optimize your ability to service your client and their needs. Uh, day three, we kind of switched it up a little bit and got more into an industrial design flow with Sculpt. I love seeing the chat in Sculpt. I thought there were some really great questions, but mostly I thought it was really cool to see people like, I've been wanting to use Sculpt, but I've been you know, either too busy or, or maybe even a little intimidated. And, and I got some really cool feedback after where someone was like, hey, I just jumped in and started using Sculpt and, you know, they made a chair. It looked like a chair, maybe an ottoman or something and had some questions technically about how to use it. I thought that was so cool uh, just to see someone take, take something they just learned and dive into it. And then yesterday was manufacturing. And I think manufacturing can be a big bear to tackle. It's a lot to lot to chew on. It's a lot to synthesize, but hopefully some of the tips and tricks we talked about yesterday will really help you help you optimize your throughput. You know, with understanding grain direction and feeds and speeds, or understanding how to make a custom shaping tool. Even if you're not using CNC and you still send out designs for custom shaping or molding tools, you can do it in Fusion. And then uh, today we're going to actually talk about what to me is one of the most crucial parts of furniture design and manufacturing, and that's collaboration. No one does anything on an island. I don't care if you think that you're like that super awesome, talented person who doesn't need to ever talk to anybody. Fact of the matter is, is everyone has clients or everyone needs to share information somehow. And more often than not, if you drop that line of communication, you're dropping that revenue availability. And so today I'm gonna to show you a couple tips and tricks in the drawing space to actually one, detail your drawings um, you know, to how you need them. And two, my favorite part is actually drawing templates. And what drawing templates is, is automation for you to do multiple sheet setups for any design you're doing. So you do it once, you save it, and you can always reference it. And I don't know if you're like me, I like drawings if I have to do a single page. I hate drawings if I have to do an actual construction document that has like 20 pages that details everything. And auto templates is a really good way to do that. We have some new functionality with all levels uh, lists. Honestly, it's going to be great for some folks. It might not be everything for other people, but it's an awesome, awesome starting point. And then the second thing that I'm going to talk about might be the most slept on tool in Fusion's repertoire. And that's online, like web-based collaboration tools. Like you can share your design with your customer or client and have a live chat. You can do live section analysis. You can do live annotations, all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm turning in my golden beret. I don't know what that means, strong opinions, but explain yourself more and I'll see, I'll see what it means. Um, so there you go. All right. So I'm going to jump in. Let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. And the biggest thing, the thing we're going to start with is drawing. So this is a drawing that I did. Now, before you, you know, look at it and think, well, we don't do drawings like that. It can really be whatever you want. This is just something I wanted to call out some, some features and functionality that I think are really, really important to the drawing process. And, and this is is kind of what some of your drawings could be. They could be way more complex or they could be honestly simpler. I find this really good. If I'm doing some prototyping, I'll do a quick drawing, export a PDF, print it out, take it into the shop or take it to whatever I'm doing and just kind of like remind myself, right? Like I, I was doing this a little while on an iPad and I kept dropping like chisels on my iPad and my iPad became like well, basically a paperweight. I was like, I'm gonna go back to the paper. I'm gonna go back to old school. So, um, so the first thing I wanna point out is in drawings, you can actually get to drawing space by just doing your drop down. And you'll see here drawing from design or from animation. I always use from design because I'm in the design. I wanna draw or synthesize this into a, a fabrication document or, you know, or if I'm sending it out to somebody, right? Like if I'm, if there's a particular part that I don't have the time or the capabilities to fabricate, 
um, I can send them drawings. I don't do it often. If I send drawings out, it's actually to a client, to a construction company or a designer or something, just so that they have the dimensions and some of the detail work and they can be on the job site looking through the information. And I'm gonna show you how to go through and do all this stuff, but, but this is essentially one of the things that you can do. So I've made a drawing from, you know, just a, a, a plan view or, or, or this is an elevation view, but um, you know, whatever you wanna do. And the way that this stuff works is you can actually go in and do drawing from design. And once you do a drawing from design, you'll have a couple options here to do a full assembly, visible only, or select. So let's hypothetically say, I just wanted to do a drawing of, I don't know, the shell. I would select the shell and you can see everything that it's selected is gonna be uh, what it translates into a drawing. I'm just gonna go ahead and do visible only for now because I'm actually gonna kind of not, not populate this drawing first and then jump into the other section. But And then here are, are two places that you can um, kind of get in and control your details. You can create a new or you can like have it applied to um, what is going to be, uh, what it's referencing. And so this would actually go into that file. Now create new means you can put it somewhere else. I don't ever change the destination because I like the drawings to live with the product that I'm actually doing. So here, normally it will say from scratch. The reason it said template is because I'm gonna show you template and I've already kind of pre-created a template to talk about, but normally it'll say from scratch. If you have created a template, this is where you can select that template. You can have multiple templates. You could have one for uh, drawings that are products, maybe only you know three feet or, or smaller or four feet or bigger or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Whatever your operational standard is, you can make a template for that. Uh, and then of course you can throw, you can change different standards. Now, anybody who's doing GD&T, which is um, really heavily used in, in the machining industry for, for documentation and things like that, you can get in and say ASME or ISO standards or anything like that. Um, I'm using inches because that's the way I work. And then sheet size is, uh, you know, you can do your A series, you can do A3, A4, all that stuff, or you can make your own custom sheet. So this is really great when you get into actual full scale drawings. If you're going to take something to manufacturing and you want to send it off, these are the type of drawings that a lot of places overseas are going to want to see. So essentially what you would do is you would hit OK. And when you hit OK, it's going to think for a minute. And, and remember, when you're turning this into a drawing, you're taking all of that 3D geometry and effectively like making all of those ISO lines kind of selectable or usable. So it can take a minute, especially if you're doing like a huge assembly, like just be prepared. But what it's doing is it's translating all of that data into a really cool functionality um, that will allow you to do just line weights, do full shadowing, do, you know, kind of see-through, stuff like that. So you can see it kind of just auto-populates this, this model. And that's just attached to my catch my mouse. I'm not clicking anything or whatever. It's, it's essentially just wants me, it's a place tool. So we're going to place this here and you can see it kind of highlights. This is where I go in and I start to say, all right, well, how do I want to set up this appearance and all of this stuff? So for, for this particular instance, this is a not a smart template. So this is just a, a, a drawing from the design. So I'm going to just kind of leave it as it is and we can come in and we can talk about different appearances. So here, you know, this is gonna convert it to a line drawing that you can see through the backside. So this is really good if you have hidden features that you want to make sure that you capture with a dashed line, right? So if you have a, a pocket somewhere, but your view is not showing the pocket, you can capture that. And then this is a uh, 3D and then this is, uh, you know, like kind of shaded. And then this is gonna be, uh, well, you know what? What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, so this is that one. And then if I wanted to apply another one for you to see, and this is selecting everything that I've come through uh, or that I have here, and you can turn these things off. So let's say I didn't wanna show the base on that one. You can simply turn it off. And these are all parametrically confined too. So if you think about all that in the past that we've talked about, if I change the parameters of these drawings, I'm going to actually get a notification that says update or get latest. And that's when you can come in and say update and it's going to auto scale your drawings, however you do it. But all of the features and functionality that you've applied to that will continue with it. So if you change the length and had it say, I don't know, 60 inches and you change it to 80 inches, it'll automatically update. So that's, that's a really awesome feature of it. 
So, and then I'm gonna show you the other, and then you can also do kind of the 3D style too. Now, when we place a drawing, you also have this edge visibility, but when you, if you check it out, we'll place one more and you have scale, you have your different orientations and you can choose some of these interferences. And you can also deal, like check out how it deals with the tangent edges. So effectively that's kind of like at a base level, you can come in and there's tons of opportunity here too. So like, let's say we wanted to do a projection of all of this. I can select this project tool and then it's gonna place tool, it's gonna place based on my kind of direction that I choose, right? And then once I hit go, it's gonna place all those things. This becomes really important when we get into talking about smart templates. I'm gonna go ahead and not save that. I'm gonna come over here. So that's a, that's kind of how you start a single drawing from a design. It's it's really intuitive. Um, you know, if you if you get lost, you can turn on tool tips and just kind of hover over it. Uh, tool tips is something that some people love, some people don't love. If you go to preferences and it'll bring up your preference pane, um, basically you can turn on tool tips here. And when I turn on tool tips, if I hover over something, it's going to tell me what that stuff is. And it's going to go one step further and actually kind of tell me what it does. And uh, at the bottom, you can see I'm on a Mac. And if I hit command slash, it'll actually bring up the learning panel. Another way to get to the learning panel is um, essentially the help center. And you can go here and it'll show the learning panel and you can click on tools and it'll tell you about that tool. It's really, 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 really helpful. Um, so I'll leave tool tips on. But so if I'm in a single drawing and I've created this stuff, you have all of these options up here, like section view, detail view, break view, all of this stuff. So this is all stuff to help you detail your drawings in an effective way. And I wanna point this out because this part you don't automate. Now, clearly you'll have certain sheets in your automated template where you know you'll wanna do section analysis or you'll wanna do a break view or you'll wanna do certain types of dimensioning. Maybe it's linear dimensions or radii or whatever. So we understand that those are really um, those are really up to you to determine what you need. But here, basically, in our create, are different types of views. Modify is the same as in the modify, like a model. You can rotate, you can move, etc. Geometries are are really easy ways to indicate center lines and, and center marks, etc. Now, your dimensions is when you actually start getting into your your kind of detailing of your drawings. Um, you know, you have your command key D dimension. This is something where you can just come in and you can select the line and it's going to apply, you know, a, a dimension to, right? So you have these opportunities to kind of come in and select these and move them how you want. Now, if you come up here, you'll see all these other dimensioning capabilities. Uh, text in leader notes, in whole and thread notes. This is super important for people to see when they get into actually doing some type of note. So I do fabrication notes on everything, like ensure all the grain is book matched and taken from stock 2.5A. You know, if, if so that tells me I'm going to take it from ash stock that's been aged, you know, kiln dried, whatever you're working with, right? And then all ensure all notes are filled with West Systems black tinted epoxy consistency. I know what West Systems with black tint is going to do. You know, so I'm actually telling fabricators, hey, we have this formula, follow it. And then I kind of call it the notes here, like slug drawings are going to be on page two, all the inches and inches, et cetera. And then your parts lists. This looks a little funky if you if you're just seeing this for the first time. These circles that are created are created from detail views. So I selected a detail view and I drew a circle around that. That actually populated down here with an exploded view of that detail. And then it tells me that size. So the reason I wanted to start with just basically the, the interface of drawings is because it is super powerful. It is a very good tool because you can you can capture all of that stuff and it's truly referenced from your design. And if you change your design, it updates with it. The last thing is, is symbols. So a lot of really good things, especially if you're doing any kind of welding, welding or fabrication like documentation, like on our welding symbols, you can come in and select, I'm just gonna select a random line, like understand that this has no welds on it. 
But basically, you're going to place these weld symbols. I just exit out, but and that'll bring up a, a dialog box where you can choose, you know, a butt weld. You can choose all kinds of different things. You can you can choose penetration thickness, all that stuff. Which for woodworkers, uh, you know, maybe you don't do any type of metal fabrication or integration into your your designs or anything like that. That's fine. But you know, I know that we have a couple pieces where we have full welded frames and all that stuff. And then insert lastly is kind of your insert image. And an insert image is really good for actually identifying what piece it's going for. I have a couple of folks who are very visual learners. And so having that visual kind of key, like this is the product you're looking at, just helps cut down on like, wait, where am I starting today? Like, what's my first thing I got to do? It's a lot easier to look at that image and be like, oh, I'm working on a credenza because it says, sideboard or credenza instead of looking at the drawing and be like, I'm lost, where am I going? Lastly is tables. Tables are effectively this. So I created this little table parts list and I go in and I say, and, and for other drawings, I might say, you know, number one is the shell, number two is the base, but you can get a lot more detailed with that too and say, you know, parts list with balloons, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I will say that even though that in the US and, and internationally, there are standards around GDNT for calling out details, but I will say every shop I've ever been in has their own process. And the whole point of drawings here is to give you enough flexibility to create a drawing stack that works for your process. Um, unlike other places where you can say like, hey, I want tangency of a fillet to do this or have these options drawings is really a even though there are regulations pretty creative focus right like you can really just sit back and say you know i like to have this type of detail now so we kind of covered what's in the drawing space and how you would start a drawing from a basic design you know again that's drop down drawings from design Let's say you've had your fun with drawings, you don't really want to mess with it anymore, and you just want to templatize everything. So what you're going to do, wherever you want this template to live, navigate to that in your navigate to that in your data panel. So I'm in my furniture design file and I'm in the sideboard kind of stack. And so I'm cool with creating a template here. I will say in in use, like in my business, we actually have a series of templates that are in their own kind of file that so we can say template for casework, template for chairs, template for, you know, desktop products or something like that. Because obviously the scales are different. The detailings might be different. So just keep that in mind, wherever you want it to live, kind of navigate to that or save it to that when it comes time to save. So let's say you're going to make a template. You're going to come up to the file icon. And you're gonna say new drawing template. This is about the only place you can find it. There's some other ways to like, you know, search help kind of things like that. But just remember that it's not in the drop down, and you can't, you don't save your drawing as a template after you've created it. You have to do new drawing template. And this will show you why in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it from scratch. I'll do ISO and I think maybe our friend uh all of woodworking, Neil, will, will like this. A3, which is you know, 11 by 17, but then it's in millimeters. He was referencing that the other day in, in lumber, like, you know, I want four a quarter by 420 millimeters or something. <laughs> um, so we're going to start a new template. So this is, this is going to look the same. You're going to, you're going to see this um, across the board every time you're, you're, you're looking at making a template. Now you'll see some really clear differences between making a template and what the drawing space was, which is that top bar. There's not a lot of the dimensions. There's not a lot of like the thread notes or any, or hole in thread notes or anything like that. And that's because what we do is we we kind of we we make this automated kind of I hate using the word for it, but like you know it's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a, a dummy document in that like it's 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 a representation of what your document is going to be. So keep that in mind. So you can see this this widget just popped up that has really like no context to what I was working on. And these are widgets that. We just say like, just use this as a visual representation. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this generic widget and I'm gonna say, I want that drawing to be the front and the scale. Scale is really important. If you have a scale that you know you're working in, you can put it in there, but understand that like, let's say I did one-to-one -one scale in my template now, 
that would make that widget look pretty big. But think about it when I'm doing a drawing on something that's 80 inches long, it's gonna be bigger than my sheet. So what I like to do, my workflow is actually just leave it at automatic because that also lets me choose different details specifically that I wanna blow the scale up on. So I leave it at automatic so that then I can go in, double click after it's placed and say, you know, I want the I want this detail part to be a one to one because the part is only three inches long, something like that. So and again, make your decisions here. So I'm just going to go ahead and place this widget. Now, like in regular drawings, we have this projected view placeholder. And and so if I select that now, I I like all my drawings to be kind of like a, an assembly like the first page to be an assembly. So I go ahead and do a couple placements and we'll do, you know, top left, right. And then I'll come in and I'll, I'll place a projection. Now you can see this ISO view isn't my favorite. There are two ways that you can change this. You can just move it to the one that you like the most, which actually strangely becomes the workflow that you do the most or that I do the most. And then you just click and drag it and you place it. But you can also double click it. And you can change you can change some of the perspectives or the styles at least. You're not going to be able to like change ISO northwest, ISO northeast, or whatever like you can if you were just starting the drawing. Um, but you you can make a little bit of changes. So that's important to remember is that like just find the direction you like and place it. The goal here is speed, not like high high level of immediate detail. Hence the reason why it's like a click drag drop and drag kind of deal. So I've got this thing, I, you know, I, I'm kind of calling out what I want, and then I'm going to edit my title block. So let's say, and I won't fill out the entire title block just because, but let's say I want that, and then I want to do, you know, La Homa Credenza, um, and then I want to do, I don't know, whatever you title your stuff, like LCV2. And then you can do things like, you know, Rev 62, because this is the current model state. So V2 Rev 62, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the 62nd one that you're making. Uh, and then your drawing number. So like LC, um, you know, Lahoma Credenza, I don't know, V2 drawing 1.2, right? So do as much as you want here. Um, you know, obviously the more information you capture in this stuff is important. One thing I will point out, like, let's say you go in and, um, and obviously it's too big, right? If you click off, it's going to auto scale it. So don't worry too much about it just being perfect or messing with uh, all of that stuff. I hope I spelled Jonathan's name right. I think I did. Yeah, cool. If you go to finish properties, and the last thing that I want to show you is, is inserting an image for your drawing. So um, I, I just went ahead and grabbed the Fusion 360 logo and I'm going to just kind of place it and do that. I'm like, oh, I don't really like it just laying down there. So you can just click and drag and move. And obviously this, it can be your branding. It can be an image of whatever. Um, this is not referenced by any other data unless you insert it. So just keep that in mind. So that's sheet one. And then let's say sheet two, I want to do, um, let's say I want to do a top or a front view and that's fine, but I want to go ahead and add a table, right? I want to do a parts list table. Uh, so any parts list I pull in, it's going to auto populate it. Uh, and I can come into and I can make edits to this stuff. You can you, you add part names, you can take off description, you can do all kinds of stuff. Item numbering, um, it really becomes super good. If you do an all level parts list, if you have, like, if I did an all level part list on that credenza, my parts list would probably be bigger than my sheet. So it's really important to keep that in mind. If it is that you can have a really large assembly and do an all level parts list. And like, so let's say you did Brad's drawing of his credenza or his wine cabinet. If I did an all level parts list on that, I think Brad made a component for every piece, which means I think he had like 50 to 100 components. So just think about that, right? Like this is kind of a known issue with all drawings, even in, in AutoCAD and things like that. Like parts list sometimes is bigger than your sheet, right? Like sometimes the sheet's only eight by 10. So just keep that in mind. You can change that first level, all level, whatever you want. And of course, whenever you're done too, you can move this around to, to meet your standards. And then let's say you wanna do, you know, a notes portion, right? 
So you can come in and and add your your notes uh, however you want. You can do. Um, whoops, sorry. I don't know why I did that. Um, you can come in and do you know fabrication notes, and you can align that. I mean, it's it's basically a, a word app, right? Like it's not. It's, this is not like mind blowing. But the cool thing is you can come in and start adding bullets and lettering values and symbols too, right? So got some awesome GD and T symbols. Um, so you can make this template however you want. And again, click and drag. This is all kind of based off AutoCAD functionality too. So if you have that experience, then you'll pick this up really quickly. So then, you know, you can add another one. You can do as many as you want. Now, you know, the, the thing to remember is that like the more you do here, the, it's going to create a drawing for every one of your different portions, right? So I'd get, I think in the credenza, we have three kind of groupings. We have the shell, we have the, the faces, and we have the base. I'm going to get three drawings per those things, which is fine. I mean, that's actually good because it's three different sections of a build and you need to you need to identify those things so i'm gonna just for time i'm gonna go ahead and save this and i'm gonna save this whole entire thing is just like template you know 12 and i'm in that base here this is where you would change it if you wanted to create a file that was basically just for drawing templates this is where you do that i'm gonna go ahead and save it so once that's saved i'm gonna go ahead and exit out of everything and then go back to this so we're at the we're at the drawing now. We're at the we're or sorry we're we're ready to make a drawing or do a template drawing of the credenza. If I go to drawing from design, here I now have these templates, right? So I had this other template that I did, and I just did this template. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just choose this one. This is where you can choose the all level versus the first level. I like starting with first level. Do what works for you. Definitely play with it. All level. I just work in so many, like, I have so many parts in my stuff when it gets to, like, cabinetry and things like that, that all level can be a little, like, daunting. However, if you wanted to, uh, like, totally just, like, mass capture every level, it's awesome because... I did all level once on a part that had a thousand pieces just to see what would happen. And it legitimately captured every one of those thousand pieces. It was, it was intimidating, but because <laughs> uh, we were also modeling like screws and things like that. So, you know, it captures all that stuff. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and just run in and hit OK. And obviously, again, it's cloud-based, it's, comp it's computing, it's going to take a second, but it's going to take that drawing associate it to the templates that I've done and automatically just start everything and boom within, you know, I think that was like 15 seconds max, maybe even less than that, 10 seconds. I have nine pages of automatically placed drawings. So there's, there's all this opportunity. And that's when I can just come in and start saying, all right, sweet. Like, you know, I'm going to start auto dimensioning stuff or I'm going to start adding my notes page to my notes, like fabrication notes or whatever. Um, there's just a ton of opportunity here to deploy smart templates for you to save you time. Because like when I was in when I was doing more like architectural mill work stuff, our construction documents might have 50 pages. Right. And like someone, for anybody who's ever worked in an architecture firm, there's usually a job at a firm called a specifier. And the specifier is like, I think that would be like the worst job ever. I mean, some people might love it, but for me, I would just, I would be freaking out because that's someone who's going in, double checking the numbers, double checking the dimensions, making sure that they have everything called out, lumber grade called out, all that stuff. And these drawing templates are ways for us to start to get into that realm of, it doesn't really matter how big or how many drawings you need to do, just do it once, like set it and forget it in a lot of ways. I did a ton of drawings at the beginning of starting my business. Um, and because I was doing templates, like I spent, I don't know, probably the first six months of our company doing a template for every piece. And then after that, I would do drawings in about five minutes. Like it was a fully automated, awesome process. So hopefully you see some, some real value there. And again, like 
set it up however you want. Some people put parts lists up top, leave fabrication notes on the bottom left. Some people want different scales. It doesn't matter. It's do what you want. Um, yeah, Jonathan, totally. Couldn't agree more. You could not pay me enough to be a specifier. Uh, that stuff, that stuff is crazy. Um, okay. So fusion team and online collaboration. This is the part that, that I think a lot of people don't know about. So in your data panel, you have this little globe. And this little globe is going to take you to essentially an online repository of your hub. Now, I want to be really clear. There are two ways that people reference like Fusion Team or hubs. You can have a personal hub. Your personal hub is all of your data, all the stuff that you work on on the weekends, all the stuff that you want to work on whenever. But you can have a Fusion Team Hub, which maybe is your company's account. And the data that lives on your company's Team Hub belongs to that hub. Now, the data that belong, is on your hub belongs to you because you're your personal owner of your own data. So keep that in mind um, when we talk about Fusion Team and hubs and stuff like that. It can be one or the other, or it can be both. Today, I'm going to talk about it in context of online fusion team, which is basically our web-based uh, collaboration uh, tool. The easiest way to get there is by just clicking this little globe. And what it's going to do is it's going to take me to, uh, let me unshare this one and reshare. Let me just set up my two screens real quick. Um, stop share. Let me minimize this and let me put that there. Hopefully you all are, are liking the drawings thing. I, I think some people like drawings a lot. Some people might not, but hopefully it's informative. Um, okay, so Fusion Team. So I clicked that globe and it actually took me to, can you still see, can you see Fusion Team y'all? Jonathan and Brad? No, let me do a different Yeah, no, we can see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we saw the web. Yep. Cool. Um, cool. So it automatically took me to this. So I clicked on that and loaded a page in Google, and then it did that, and I reshared, and that's how you get to it. Um, so what you're seeing here is that credenza that we were just talking about. And it's a fully linked thing. Now, you don't, you're, you're, your customer or your collaborator doesn't have to have Fusion to see some of this data, right? Like they don't need to, to have a seat in your hub to view this stuff. This is made to share publicly. You can also get to it by typing in that URL. A360.autodesk.com is gonna take, to the, take you to this and you're gonna be able to sign in and then you'll be able to go to your team hub. Now, here's where like there's a little bit of like, like focus if you have a team hub for a business, you're probably paying like a hundred bucks a year to have some deeper opportunities here for collaboration. But it, I want to be really clear that every uh, every like seat of Fusion, like if you have a free version of Fusion, will have a version of this. So this all applies to you, and you can share it with your partner, you can share it with a friend, or if you're working in college or something and you want to share it with one of your 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 colleagues in school, you can do all that stuff too. So Fusion Team is super awesome. I'm going to kind of just go back and, and, and so I have a, a bunch of different files where I kind of break it out, like base content, things that I show, cam specific, drawing specific, generator specific, all that stuff. So let's open up the base content. And all of this is mirrored in Fusion. So this is your data panel. This is an online version of your data panel. So I have all this stuff that I've modeled over time or things I'm working on and Let's go into furniture design and open up that project. So now I'm in that project. So now you see that this is all the stuff in the data panel. So the original JPEG that I imported to do our, our, our you know, uh, organic top or organic face, you know, playing around with a different type of way to do a face or the table saw that Jonathan and everybody worked on or Alex's chair. But I'm gonna go ahead and open up the overview. And oh, actually, I want to go back because I want to show you something. So um, one of the things that we use a lot at Lahoma is we can control who has access as an editor, who's an admin, or who's as a viewer. These are people who are going to get into Fusion with you and help you model. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. 
wiki pages this to me is like one of those hidden treasures in fusion that no one knows about but if you were to look at like my actual business fusion account we have so many wiki pages for our designs so here you can basically say like bomb or whatever you can you can call it whatever you want and you can either set it up um, as like a cell network like an excel document or you can use it as an imagery like an assembly document or you can just write notes like you know, hi, Brad. And, you know, you're seeing this, uh, welcome to the team, right? So like you can say, welcome to the project. Sorry, I'm like yelling in text. Um, welcome to the team, you know, use this document um, as a guiding light for, you know, whatever. Um, so it can be like friendly reminders about, hey, this project is due X, Y, Z, all this stuff. So wiki pages is awesome. Once you publish it, it's gonna actually update and you'll just have access to this. So I have ones that have like 30 of these for a project. Some of them might be parts list orders. Like if we're ordering from, if we're gonna like prototype something and we wanna test some hardware, we might have like McMaster car um, carts in there, or we might have, um, you know, like supply chain notes or something like that, or point of contact for the customer who's made an order or something. So if we go back to content and open up base again, um, and again, this is just all different ways to view it. I, I usually default to the list, but you can set it up to, to be the, the thing too, the, the little icons. So we're gonna go to overview. And then now I'm gonna see here that like, I've got all this information. It's telling me who's using it. Now I have a pro level account for Fusion Team. So this is where it's a little bit different, right? You'll see that, like Brad is already in the design. Like Brad is in the design. He's got it open. Like, you know, he's asking me a question. I can go in and comment. But before we get there, you can see now there's that drawing that I originally showed. It says out of date because we've made edits to the original file. Now we could go in and I could say, I could open this up and say, get latest. And it would push that. Um, so there's just all this awesome opportunity to share information with folks not in an engineering capacity. There might be times when you work at a company where there's the shop floor, there's the design team, and then maybe there's the logistics and shipping team. Well, the logistics and shipping team probably don't need access to the raw informational model that is directly tied to manufacturing, right? You want a level of security to where they can't accidentally go in and erase a fillet. You can share this with them and they can, you know, they can, they can make commentary or ask questions, but stay away or be one step removed from product. Or you can start your day and hit open in desktop. And guess what? It's going to open that file in Fusion 360. It's pretty incredible. So I'm going to go to view. And view is actually one of, the, this is where you really get to play with talking to your customers. So I'm going to open up the chat and I see that chat, made, or I see that Brad like, hey, does it make sense to you these corners, a rabbit joint for strength reason? you know, like say, you know, we're going to like, great question, um, client specified, you know, substitute or, you know, um, you know, basically like make stronger by plugged screws, right? I don't know, some, whatever you're going to do. But if I go there and post it, Brad is automatically updated. And, you know, he might even be able to reply real time or whatever. Um, and so you can make all these things. Now, that's cool. Commentary and stuff is whatever, like, great. We could also just have a conversation in person. Well, you could, maybe right now, specifically hard. But if we had a customer who's on the other side of the world, it's a lot harder. And so you can actually come in and they can start to say like, hey, show me more of this detail. Right. Or if you if they if they're really picky, they're going to come in and actually do, you know, a call out. They're going to actually come in and do a call out with a little comment box and be like, you know, what's uh, tell me, you know, I don't know, uh, fill it this corner. So and then when you post it, this lives with this document. So anytime I were to open up view, I'm going to see this. Uh, and you can obviously make a lot of different changes. You can do line tools, you can do freehand, you can do circular sections or cloud sections or whatever. If I save it, it's gonna just leave that there as this little bubble. And I can come in and be like, oh yeah, yeah, Trent said to fill this. Like, 
totally on point. We know that that's there. But some of my favorite parts here, or let's say like Brad's like, hey, remind me again when overall length in, and you're like, crap. I totally don't, I forgot. So you're gonna to go to measure and you can click a line, you can click the top, let's just click the line. And then, you know, you're gonna draw this line and whatever. Obviously I would have selected the whole thing and it would tell me the whole length, right? Like I can, it's just, you can measure however you want. And then I think my most favorite part is gonna be the section analyses. So section, like live section analyses, that's like, you can start to mess with the kind of directions. You can, you know, mess with kind of clicking and dragging this way. It doesn't really matter, right? Like if the client's like, hey, show me what the inside details look like or, or what's the joinery positioning on this, right? Like how are these sliding rails working? You can start to do sectional analyses and you can, you can, you can even come in and say, you know, I want it from the top down. Like show me, show me like start from the bottom and just go up. Um, now, again, some of these are going to be, you know, constrained to the hundred dollars a year that you would pay to do this. And obviously that's for a business who's going to be needing this a lot, but you can still have some of this functionality in the free versions. Uh, and then, of course, there's like the document browser. You can start looking into different types of like named views or you could call out specific kind of thumbnails if you have them. And then the exploded model. This might break. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Um, yeah, that's right. So it's going to take all the componentry and it's going to basically do an animation, which you can do this in our animation panel. I've just exploded all the componentry for this design. Why would you use this? I don't know. Like, I, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I would probably not ever use this unless I wanted to remind myself how complex the design was or or if I wanted to see something and how it went together, maybe I would like open it up one level and be like, oh, okay, that's cool. And then these, these, this stuff over here is kind of just pretty basic stuff, like printing a, a, an image or, or stuff like that. So, um, and then lastly, share. So if I were going to share this document, I can actually, this is, this is how you would like share it with a customer. Like say you're, you're ready to share with a customer. You want them to be able to like flip around in it. You can hit that share icon and you can just copy this link and you can either allow them to download it, not download it. Like if it has IP or proprietary information in it and you don't want to risk it, turn off that, um, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. And you can email it or you can embed it. Um, so pretty, pretty basic stuff. And then uh, all of those kind of things. Milestones, just uh, that's that's kind of a pro level of like, hey, we've reached milestone one, customer has approved V1, V2 kind of deal. Um, so yeah, I think with that, we're almost at kind of an like 40, man, the time goes fast when you're demoing stuff. That's crazy. Um, I think what I'd love to do is actually like stop sharing and have a conversation with Brad and, and Jonathan and field your questions about collaboration or drawings. Like I have all these drawings up, I can show them. Um, I didn't want to dive too deep into the drawings, like making one just one drawing from a design, because honestly, the opportunity there is kind of endless to, to do things. Like you can make them as detailed as you want. And honestly, it's it's kind of a choose your own adventure and, and it's just too much to demo in, in 45 minutes, but I'm happy to field any questions if you do have them. So, so maybe I'll uh, stop sharing and maybe we can all just jump on and let's look yeah. to the chat. Were there some good questions or commentary that came yeah, up while actually, we're doing anything that we should. I'm kind of in a, about? in a good position to um, address one of these. So uh, somebody's asking about um, exploded uh, views. Mm -hmm. Um and there's something really cool you can do with drawings in Fusion that a lot of people don't know about. So I'm in the animation workspace here. Um, it's pretty simple. Basically, you just move the cursor wherever you want, and then you grab these parts and move them to a specific location. So as you can see here, I'm trying to give myself an exploded view, right? Um, so if I play this, it starts there. This is like this little electronic, like contactless UV sanitizing device I'm working on. So that's the, that's the animation that can be useful, but there's another thing you can do with drawings where you go new drawing from animation and then storyboard one. That's the only one I have. We already covered all this stuff. Let's make it a little bigger. 
click OK. And then when you get in the drawing, you'll see, you can probably do this at one to one. This thing's pretty small. No, not quite. And now you've got an exploded drawing. So this can be really useful for um, assembly diagrams. You can do multiple steps. Um, you could have, you know, this, this particular piece right here, it makes sense as just like a vertically exploded uh, object because that's how everything goes together. But if you've got multiple parts that come in from different angles, you can uh, use this same space and have multiple storyboards, um, different milestones within the animation, you know, these different keyframes. You could stop at these points and have that storyboard be another sheet. So that's a, that's a good, good trick. I use that one quite a bit. Yeah, that's, I, I think, yeah, the animations thing is, I was just looking back through the, the chat and stuff. Um, animations are really super helpful. Uh, someone actually called it out and it was a really great point. It's like perfect for showing people new to the project, how things go together, hundred percent, right? Like, you know, if someone, I don't know, if you looked at Brad's like wine cabinet, people could be like, oh man, it's super complex. How does it go together? We'll do an exploded view and say, well, it's actually only like eight sheets of plywood or whatever, and it, and it kind of goes together like this. So um, I, I would be curious to see if like the stuff that we talked about in drawings was surprising to anybody. I personally um, haven't seen a ton of people deep dive into drawings. I'm really curious, especially this user group uh, who could use drawings a lot. I mean, are, were there things in there that you thought were interesting or things you didn't know or... Or, you know, is it something that you're going to try to deploy more? Because if it does become, you know, useful, it's, it's content that I want to know about so that we can create, kind of show you how to walk through those things. And I'll also add that our drawings team is awesome. They are super experienced. They have a really, they have laser focus on making this tool amazing. And I, I'm not just saying it. Like, if you look at the last six months of updates, like on Kaching's blog of what's new or whatever, every month they're dropping new drawing stuff, like new automation tools, new recognition tools, new break view tools, all these things. And we have no interest in slowing that down. So hopefully, hopefully it's it's going to look good for you. Um, yeah, it's also I mean something to keep in mind with the way that they're approaching it is that it's not a um, they're they're completely starting from scratch thinking what's the right way to use drawings to uh, communicate what needs to happen in a design and how does that work as, as closely as possible being integrated with the other data that you have in a, in a, in a design. Um, it's like, it's really a radical way of, of thinking about how it's done. I think in, especially in the long term, it's going to be an incredible tool. Yeah, actually um, I, I love that you said that. And, and as I, it made me realize too, it looks like tech Maverick asked a question about, sketches in, uh, in, in the drawing space. Brad, if you, if you can kind of go through that, I forgot, that's a great workflow. And I know Brad's got something queued up. So as he's getting that ready, just let me know when you want me to be quiet, but basically you can use the sketch command in drawings too. And I think one of the ways Brad uses it is like, he wants to keep an area free and clear. So he'll make a shape or something, right? So um, there's a ton of stuff. So Brad, if you can, share it but if not i can just pull it up too and show yeah um, no, I, um yeah i can show that cool give me a second here are you guys seeing my screen okay yep yeah so um i'm just going to create a quick drawing there's actually a couple different ways of doing this um give me a second here so i'm, just, I'm not going to do a full assembly i'm just going to do um like maybe this left panel or something like that um, and just to reiterate what, what Trent was talking about, I love using the templates. They are so powerful. You can see I have a whole bunch in here and I demo it. It just speeds things up substantially. Um, so a couple tips and tricks I wanted to share with you guys real quick. Um, and I don't think we have time for me to demo all of them, but I'll hit on one that Trent mentioned. Your bills of materials can get very long and you can actually, um, and it's, it's really hard to see, but there's a little tiny triangle at the bottom of your table and you can drag that triangle and it'll take your long um, bills of material and bake, break it into two or three columns. So if you need just a little bit extra room, you can actually do that. 
Um, so I'm going to just do this really quick. And the question came up, can you um, display sketches in your drawing? And the answer is yes and yes. There's actually two different ways of doing this. Um, so I'm gonna jump back to this wine cabinet and let me activate this left panel real quick. And I'm gonna just create a quick sketch on this side. I'm just gonna draw um, a, a quick shape or something like that. So I'm just gonna do a circle and you know a square or something like this. I'll go ahead and save that. And I did it out in space, so it's a little bit easier to see, but you can actually bring in sketches like this onto your drawing if you need to. Um, so we can see it's out of date. I'll go ahead and update this and we'll see the, the sketches show up. The other option, let me, let me go ahead and turn this guy on. So here's my sketches you can see. And if I come in here and turn that guy on, you'll see that it did this. Now the drawback with it is it's kind of a hatched line. Um, so it's just because it's referencing it as a sketch, but you can bring stuff in from a sketch. Like maybe you need to reference something that you drew on there. The other method, which is newer, is this icon right here, create sketch. Notice I'm in my drawing and I can say create sketch and it kind of puts me into this little sketch environment and you'll see some commonly used commands like lines and circles and rectangles, etc. You can move things around, trim and extend, you can add text. So maybe I want to create a, you know, a custom symbol or something like that. Um, I can, it's almost like, you know, like Trent mentioned, you're kind of drawing in like AutoCAD or something. Um, so I could, you know, draw my, my symbol. Um, I have snap turned on, so I'm getting weird result there. I apologize. Let me just do something like that, right? Um, and if I finish my sketch, this is an actual, you know, object lines, that kind of a thing. So there's two different methods, using a sketch from Fusion 360's design environment or using a sketch in the uh, drawing environment. And the last thing I'll show here is the, the table. I'll throw that on here. And um, this little triangle right here is what I was talking about. If I grab that, I can actually, you can kind of see as I'm dragging it, it's stretching it out. Um, but I can do something like that, for example, <laughs> and it'll make the table fit the whole screen. The last tip I use a lot is for custom views. And this isn't the best example. I don't really have a, a great example here, but a lot of people don't know about this named view. So, you know, we have default isometric views. Maybe I wanna show the like, line cabinet kind of from like this angle or something like that. I can right mouse click and say new named view. And I'll call this, you know, um, Brad ISO or something. I'll save that guy. Okay, what's cool about that is when I go into my drawing, I can now reference that as one of my views. So I could come in here and say, I wanna do a base view. Oh, actually, I need to update, sorry. Let me do that real quick. So we'll update my session so it's um, in sync with the line cabinet. And now I can do my base view. And notice it says orientation front, but notice the new one in here, Brad ISO. And we're now looking exactly in that direction. So you might have like interesting projected views that you need to create or whatever. You can do that using those named views. So I'm gonna pass it back to you, Trent. Well, yeah, actually I'm gonna just ask them and answer some of these questions live. So Tech Maverick had a really, really good question about, um, so basically auto dimensioning based on 3D model specifications. This would be really, really valuable, especially if you parameterized your models and named them, right? So overall length, you could, if you, if you attach that naming convention to the component and then, you, and then you send it into a template or something, it'll do something, right? So healthy dose of reality, that involves a whole lot of software like engineering. And it also involves a whole lot of machine learning and artificial intelligence writing. And it's something that we've played with 
in Autodesk research. We've not played with it in Fusion as a product, but I do think it's important to call out that like, so Autodesk has an entire research arm and, and it's all public information. Like not all their pro projects are public because some of it's just like, hey, I have this crazy idea, I'm gonna try it. But one of the things that we've really focused on as a company as a whole is using our research division to actually explore things like that tech maverick because it's way more complex than like, it, it's one of those things where it's like, it would be easy to do it. Like you can state it in a sentence and make it sound easy, but technologically it's really difficult. Um, so it is, it is something we think about, we want it, we know about it, and we're, we're working with our partners within the company to like kind of explore what that would be like, but I, I, it's not anywhere in the near, near future. Um, so yeah, there, there's some things like that, that unfortunately just writing that technology is kind of difficult. Um, yeah. So Jonathan, cool. You found it. You feel that one from strong opinions um, about uh, it's so funny to say that every out loud, like you, you feel that that question from strong opinions, um, uh, clever, clever in the naming convention. Um, but yeah. So if you do want to participate and be early beta testers or feedback hubs or anything like that, check out the Fusion 360 feedback. Hub. If you were on yesterday's call, Spencer, um, he and Jonathan probably are on the, the forum the most and they listen. Um, you know what I mean? And so if you have like, be nice, obviously, like obviously effective criticism comes from it being grounded. Like, I'm not going to lie. If, if I see a comment that's like, you know, make Fusion 360, like help me drive my Tesla. Well, okay, next. But if you say it would be really cool if we could do X, Y, and Z to help, you know, X, Y, and Z. So th those types of things seem to, cause we need a little bit more to go on. We're not mind readers, right? Like we, we, we're just like you, we're, we're we just happen to work for the company. Um, and I think that's really, you know, the, the human side of it. Um, yeah. If you go to the forums, there's, there's a lot of, if you need help with anything, if you need help with the workflow, anything like that, if you're having, you know, tech, technical issues, whatever it is, it's by far the best place to go. Um, you can go to the feedback hub there and, you know, we, we get feedback from you on things we're working on. Um, but if you kind of go up one level from there, you'll see all the different forums. Um, if you're going to use the forums, uh, post screenshots, um, do, uh, do screencast videos, be as descriptive as you can. The more information you put in, especially if there's images you can, you can add, the better um, attention you're going to get. It's just how it works. You know, we're all, like, yeah. like, like Trent said, we're all human. Yeah. It's a great point. So there's, there's some really good questions here. And, and I want to, so um, Ethan, so is there a way to dial in orientation of the model to create named views? So I, 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 th I think you already know about named views and your question is more, how can I get it 10 degrees from the left of point X, Y, and Z? No, not that I know of. I've seen people get very specific with like looking at the focal length that, that they're like using within Fusion and then figuring out from the dimension that they're, you know, centered on from a midpoint, you could do the math, but there's no easy way to do it. Mostly because it is like a kind of a 3D viewer, right? It's really hard to do that with, with 3D spacing. I, if trend, you don't know name... Oh, sorry huh? to interrupt. To add to that, I, there are situations where you want to be at a very specific angle. And sometimes I'll create a dummy block with yeah. a 30 degree or 32.3 degree, you know, face on it. or And then I use that face to look at, and then I create my named view. So, I mean, it, it's not smooth, but it is, it's a, it's a workaround. So. That's actually a really good workaround. I never thought about that. <laughs> That's super good. Um, I do want to show, Ethan brings up a really good point, named views. So name views is something that we do so that it just makes kind of scrolling a little bit easier or like not just doing a global scroll. So normally you wouldn't have these things here. You would just it'd stop at home and home is effectively all of these things, right? So front, right, and then home. It just makes it easier. But what you can do is you can actually navigate to somewhere you want. So let's say I want to just focus on this. And I want that to be a view that's really easily repeatable. I can right click named view, and then you can name it, you know, whatever you want to name it. And then let's say I move back out to something and I want to go, oh, I'm doing my small ISO. I'm like, well, I want to see that detail again. 
It's just going to automatically take you there. And that's going to automatically take you from there, from anywhere in the 3D world, right? Like it's super handy. Um, the, the like kind of like tips and tricks with main views, if you're doing any type of video content, like I'm kind of giving you, I'm like giving you a peek behind the curtain. So if you're, if you're, if you're on YouTube or you're on Instagram or you like sharing videos of your work, or that's kind of a creative thing you want to do, name views is how you want to always do your transitions. And that's actually kind of like a, it's pretty funny to share that, but it, it's kind of like our tip. Like if you watch our videos and you don't use name views, one of us normally will, will ping you and be like, use name views, damn it. Um, so that's, it looks, that's it looks cinematic when you do it that way. It does. It really does. And then Tech Maverick, um, about the sketches visible in the drawing view. Yeah. So that's actually, we have that same thought and that's actually where we're starting. That's some of the earliest research that I've seen because it is already predefined, getting it to talk to one another. Um, you know, basically it, that's, that's what they're working on now. So sounds like you've got some really good ideas about how we could do it. And I'm actually really happy to hear that we're kind of similar in the similar space it might be a little bit different with your background in programming but um hey, hey train i wanted to interject really quick unfortunately they couldn't see it when you were doing the collaboration because i agree with you the collaboration i think is underutilized but way powerful when you added your note to me i was working in fusion all of a sudden i got a little pop-up in my fusion that said trent made a reply here's what it was all this kind of stuff so you might, you know, you didn't have to reply right then. It might've been two hours later and I'm busy working. I get your notification when you reply. And so it's like, I get instant answer instead of waiting for a phone call or an email or talking to you tomorrow or whatever. It was, it was instantaneous. It was pretty cool. You're on mute, Trent. Sorry about that. Uh, I think that's really a good point because uh, if you don't keep up with the what's new blogs, you might've missed this. And if you work by yourself, you, you might not have seen this uh, or you just kind of like, okay, but I want to call out these little avatars, these little, like these little coins next to it, the T um, obviously you see it here and you see it here. This is what's actually something that we developed. That's totally unique um, to us. Just, I don't know, four months ago or something. It's called assembly concurrency. And what this means is it allows you to see who's in your drawing. So if I had Brad in this drawing working on an ex externally referenced part, let's say that the drawer face was inserted from some other design. In fact, actually the uh, sideboard we did the other day is has that, but you would see you know, a, a BT next to what he's working on. And he would basically be doing an edit in place. So I can't, like I couldn't go in and mess with what he's doing. And so we've actually made it where multiple people can work in the same file concurrently without stepping on one another, which I think is like fantastic. And it kind of goes back to this point of, of our data play. Like we live in 2021, data is a part of everybody's life and you own your data, right? Like there's like Fusion doesn't own, your, like you own your data unless you're working for a company and then they own their data. But the cool thing is, is that with that data conversation has expanded on how do we let all this data work concurrently together? And these are kind of those steps that we're taking to do that. So um, assembly concurrency is live. If you're ever in a file with someone, you'll see their little avatar pop up. I think it's super cool. Um, that was something I was really excited about launching. So it's like Google Sheets. Like if you're in a Google Sheet or you know PowerPoint and Jonathan's like drawing a mustache on your face or giving you a unibrow, you can go right back at them and draw another. So, um, but yeah, so I think with that, we're pretty much at time. Jonathan, did you have something? There's one last question here. Somebody's asking about, I think what he's, what he's saying is um, uh, a storyboard at the beginning, uh, maybe like an index page is, is probably, probably what he means there. Um, so as far as I know, that's not something we can do yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, not yet. I, I, I hear, yeah, index paging. You can do, you could do an index, uh, a workaround for it, honestly, would be doing a drawing from an animation somehow and making that your index page or doing a blank template with a bunch of text and parts stuff, but then it needs to populate it somehow. So right. you might need to make like a really small 
like a really small widget, right? Like make the scale really small and maybe put it in your title block or something. Um, those are some workarounds. I mean, it's a great question. I'll, I'll actually take that to the, there's a bunch of drawing stuff that I'm gonna share with the drawings team. Like these are all really good questions. And then strong opinions of three people are on the model at once. How does Fusion sort out that change in tech match? Maverick said, it must be insane on the programming side. Totally is. It is. It's 100% insane, the fact that you can do that. And the way that we work at Strong Opinions is um, we actually, uh, we, we do kind of this, like on the back end, essentially you're, you're reserving the document in a way. And you're doing that by actually doing the edit in place command. So if I were to come in here, let me open up that file. So if I have an externally referenced part, you're gonna see like a little chain next to your, that file. And uh, so as this loads, um, my poor computer is like, you have so many things going on. Oh, let me stop sharing real quick and get this all sorted. Um, I'm like streaming from 50 different places. Um, there we go. Should be able to see that. So you see this little, you see this little, um, you see this little chain here and this pencil. I can go in and actually select edit in place. And this is how we're doing it, strong opinions, is that now I'm in this file and if Jonathan were in this file, he could edit any of this stuff up here, but I've essentially like reserved that document, which is you're in the file making changes. And then essentially I, I would make a change and then I would say end edit in place, or you can right click and stuff. And, and, and had he been in and had I made a change, it would show this component as having needing to be, uh, has, having have been updated. And you'd have a little thing here that says get latest or up here, which will say get latest. Um, actually a little bit, let me pull this up. It'll look kind of like that. Like it's a referenced part, but you can do it all in the same space. And the cool thing is you can do it via like, you can be chatting on Slack too and be like, hey, just made the changes on the, the arm or whatever. Like, you know, I'm going to push them. Can you can you update so you have latest data? Latest data? And that, that sort of brings us back to a best, a best practices thing where if you've got a bunch of people working on a design, you want to have separate components that are referenced into a, like, a, you know, a parent document. Think of it that way. Um, yeah. And it, it's going to keep you from making mistakes and, you know, losing track of who's doing what. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I think everybody, you know, that's, that's it. Like, that's all we got for, for this, uh, for, for this week. I really love that you all, some of you have been on every day and I really appreciate that. Uh, I really feel like we've all gotten to know each other. Um, you know, keep, keep watching the YouTube channel, keep checking all that stuff out. All of these will be live and, um, referenceable, you know, via our YouTube channel and, and really hit up the forums that, that everyone is, is talking about. Uh, you know, Jonathan will field your question, Spencer, Brad. I mean, I think all of us participate somewhat. I probably participate the least, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, and then I, um, I'm not going to call Jonathan out like live, but I, mean, I am going to kind of call him out live is that we're already talking about what it would be like to do product design and additive week long intensives and things like that. Like definitely don't know what that would look like right this second. Cause we just started talking about it, but that's all from stuff from you all. So thanks again, Jonathan, Brad, thanks for spending the week with us and sharing your expertise. Um, and uh, if you want to say anything, maybe y'all can close it out. And, I'll, you know, my piece is stay in touch, everybody. Thanks for showing up. And, yeah, appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for having us. This, is, this has been really fun and looking forward to doing it again. Um, I am going to add some more content to my um, YouTube channel. There's some people who are asking about, like, a little more detail on that tapering jig thing. So check back there. I'll, I'll probably put up a tutorial or two. I'm kind of overdue to add some stuff. Yeah, and Trent, this has been a blast. When you said it was going to be week long, I'm like, wow. And then we, I could do this another whole week, right? There's so much to talk about. There's so much to learn. And the reason we love doing this is not only are we kind of sharing what we know, we're learning from you guys. And that's yeah. what I enjoy doing is like, you know, we get to see what kind of questions are you guys asking and, and what would you like to see next? And, you know, so yeah, keep an eye out. Definitely make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're always putting new content out there. Um, you know, make comments in the, the YouTube 
comments and stuff like that, we do read those. So it, it helps give us ideas on what to talk about next. So with that, yeah. everybody, thank you so much for attending. Trent, great job. Jonathan, awesome job. Yeah, killer. All right, folks, take care, be safe.